I'm in Burlington at the home of Donna Bister and Mark Estrin. Donna has been raising monarch butterflies every year since 2016. She raises two to three classes per summer, which equals about 90 monarchs. I think we had milkweed and we thought, milkweed, mmm, milkweed monarchs. And you can see where we've been harvesting for the caterpillars and they eat an enormous amount of milkweed. And this is a caterpillar that is going to turn into a monarch butterfly. It is, it's pretty magical because from something this big is a butterfly. We order 20 caterpillars at a time and we raise them as a group and then they all fly away together. And do they stay in our yard where we've planted flowers for them and milkweed? No, <laughs> they fly away. Well, we think of them as classes and they graduate. And each year we have three uh, graduating classes and this is the third class of 2022. It's something that almost every kindergarten teacher does. I guess they've just been um, designated an endangered species, but we've been hearing about the monarch migrations, the number of monarchs decreasing every year, every year, every year. We thought, well, a few more can't hurt, right? Well, we actually send away for caterpillars or eggs from a place in Pennsylvania. And so we raise them in a file box. All they do is eat and poop. Now I'm feeding them three or four times a day. That will let me have fresh milkweed leaves probably into September. Oh, nice. So maybe we'll have four classes this year instead of three. And anybody can do this. It's easy. It's really easy. We should mention that raising captive bred monarchs is controversial, and some experts advise the best way to help the butterflies is by improving their habitat, growing milkweed, and avoiding pesticide use. So we have one caterpillar here who's climbed up to start moving into a chrysalis. Soon the rest of these caterpillars will form a chrysalis with their friend. Then they attach themselves to the screen, transform into a beautiful jade green chrysalis with gold dots around the top. No, no, they don't spin it. They transform from a caterpillar into a chrysalis. I don't think I've ever seen the exact moment. And then they rest and change in, inside. We don't exactly know how. No, what happens inside there is just un un not understandable. And now we wait about 10 days while the monarchs undergo the process of metamorphosis, changing from a caterpillar into a butterfly. Look, something's happening over here. Yes, the little orange cat is a stray. Oh, and neither of these are our, our cats. Oh, there's our cat. In the meantime, I saw on Facebook that there was a monarch butterfly release being held in Burlington City Hall Park. Every fall, the monarchs migrate thousands of miles to warmer climates. And in Vermont, we have a special attachment to the monarch, which was declared the official state butterfly in 1987. It's just something for the sage for smudging. Get some flowers and we're just going to make a decorative mandala around the um, butterfly tent. You know, just bring awareness that I think they were just recently on the endangered list and edge of collapse. In July, the migratory monarch butterfly was designated as endangered by the International Union for Conservation of Nature. The butterflies face threats from climate change and habitat destruction, and their numbers have declined. It's a great place to release them into our six million dollar pollinator park. <laughs> Apparently we have some folks here who have been doing it for six years. We just wanted to make it a beautiful little ceremony. We were talking about, well, what if there's more people than there are butterflies to release? And we said, that would be a great problem. <laughs> it's really heartwarming to see so many people. I feel not alone because the reason I'm raising them is because um, I don't see very many. And now we're back to Donna and Mark's house on a humid morning. Hello, we're hatching butterflies. Well, butterflies are hatching. We have nothing to do with it other than raising them. Those are real? Yeah. Oh yeah, when I was a kid, I used to, ca I used to catch them with a net. Oh. 
They all hatched this morning? Yeah, all of these. And then the chrysalis becomes transparent and you can see the monarch wings inside. And then they hatch head first, flip over, and then flap their wings very slowly to dry over a couple of hours. So Donna has been up since 6 a.m. and I've been here since 9 a.m. Two hours. And these butterflies do not seem ready to fly away. Maybe because it's raining, maybe because it's humid. Nobody's flown yet. They're just still hanging. The summer batches don't live very long, about a month or two. They lay more eggs in that hatch they and then those fly. Yeah. A further, yeah. About a month, yeah, for the whole cycle. And it's variable depending on the weather. Male monarchs have uh, two black spots on their lower wings. Getting ready to fly away. Those two are, these two are. Do you want to stay here? I doubt it. <laughs> there it goes yeah. flying right past my nose. And then they fly away. And we hope lay eggs in the dispersed milkweed that's growing in our backyard and also all around the neighborhood. Overall, the total number is nowhere near it was even 10 years ago. So every little hatch helps a little bit. today. A squirrel jumped in my face and now there's a monarch on my forehead. Well, this monarch has adopted me as its landing pad and we will get stuck in Vermont View again real soon. Hopefully with lots of bees and butterflies and pollinators. <laughs> she, she's moving and flapping. <laughs> she is. You're a living hairbarrette. What are you doing?